legend. She's been starring in movies since 1912, and she is a charmer. You will love her when she gets out here. Miss Lillian Gish. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, also that cockney rascal from on the buses, Reg Varney, will be here. To, uh, to talk to us and to perform. And when you talk of fami famous music, moody, fainty, faming, point. <laughs> When you talk of famous movie musicals, one romantic figure springs to mind. And he's here tonight as well. He's going to sing for us, and we're going to talk with him. Howard Keel. So, Howard Keel, eh? All in all... Howard Keel. Howard Keel. I love him. Yes? Love him. Uh, matter of fact, Don, you and Howard Keel have a, a lot in common. You, really? No, seriously. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you, you're both tall. Yeah. You're both very good looking. You both attract the, the opposite sex. Yeah, we're, both, we're, we're both singers? Well, three out of four is not bad. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. <laughs> we're all doing Jack Benny up here tonight, isn't that fair? Okay. You talk about singers, here's a lady really belts him out. She's become one of our favorites. Kiri Adams is her name. The song is Nothing Can Stop Me Now. And if you applaud, nothing can stop her now either. We're off and running, right? Here we go. Kiri Adams, look out. with the incomparable Miss Lillian Dish. Hang in there, you're gonna love this lady. Gish has been starring in movies since uh, 1912. Her list of uh, friends and leading men reads like a Hollywood who's who, including uh, legends like Douglas Fairbanks and Rudolph Valentino. She is the longest performing actress in movie history, and I must say this, truly a Hollywood star. So ladies and gentlemen, would you greet please Miss Lillian Gish. Yeah. Thank you, dear Don Lane. 
time for those beautiful flowers and the crew to... It, oh, yes. Uh, well, I'm wondering how I'm going to get to, to Hobart in the morning. Well, you can float on the flowers or something. I, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> beautiful. You've won a lot of hearts around here today, whether you know it or not. You did. Oh. It's nice. Let me talk to you about uh, Lillian Gish. With a name like Gish, yes. which we're used to now, but probably not the other. You've never, you never changed your name. You kept your family name. Mr. Griffith said, Gish, fish, pish. <laughs> <laughs> terrible name for an actress. And Dorothy pulled herself up and said, if it was good enough for mother, it's good enough for us. Mm. And you kept so it. it's, That's it's our name. You, when you mention Mr. Griffiths, of course, you mean D.W. Griffiths, who was a, Griffith, one of the yes. silent film... Uh, no, the father of film. Father of film. In America. Mm. Not France. Uh, we had others there, Malleus, and, uh, but that's in my program that I do. Of course, in, in 1912 was the first time that you met Mr. Griffiths, and I understand he auditioned you by firing off a gun. What, what, what did that mean? Well, he asked if we could act, uh -huh. and Dorothy said, we are the legitimate theater. Ah, <laughs> We'd yes. been seven years in the theater. We started when she was four and I was five. Mm. And he said, I don't mean reading lines, I mean, can you act? Well, we didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, come upstairs, the actors are up there, and we'll rehearse a plot. Mm. And at the end, he took a gun, a little twenty-two revolver, and started shooting at the ceiling and chasing us around the room, and we thought we were in a madhouse. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't go back there without Mother for weeks. <laughs> Talk about that would be funny casting going in there and say, Look at this man's a maniac, shoots the gun. Never mind yeah, a casting yeah. couch, he has a pistol. It's a, yeah. But mother said, but, It can't be all bad. There was a Lionel Barrymore there. Mm, true. Well, you so you looked down on movies more or less in the beginning. Did you think oh. it was, was it, an, was it, uh, oh, all actors did. Yeah. It was the last thing you did to feed yourself was mm. to go in the movies. Mm. You would go in stock or vaudeville or anything. Be but that before you would do a motion picture yes mm. there, of course mr griffith you, you worked with him without ever having any scripts oh he never had a script for anything what did you have to learn then he had it all in his mind and he called out the plot and you found your characters he'd say don't tell me i haven't time show me and you get up and show him a walk or a piece of business uh, or something you had in mind for the character you were going to play mm. and he would rehearse it, and if it fitted, yes, if no, not. So you could experiment, and you, that's how you learn to act. There's no other way of learning how to act except to be a people watcher and watch the human race. Mm. Oh, we're running bur uh, mm. Orphans of the Storm. Oh, just little pieces here and there, that's all. Uh -huh. We're just running them to... That's so my beloved sister, Dorothy, uh -huh. playing the blind one. And there uh, you are. Aren't uh, you... Aren't you beautiful? Isn't I it? picked that um, story because I found it had been translated into 40 different languages. Mm -hmm. they, you see, they've kidnapped her mm. and they've been separated. And she's down on the street. Oh dear. If you just. I think that's beautiful. You got all carried away with your piece of film. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that good? You were as involved just then as you were then. Didn't well, you know? uh, it's not me, though. You see, that's somebody else. Yes. And the situation takes over. He's Let beautiful. me show you some surprises we got for you. Some things perhaps maybe you haven't seen. Our researchers are fantastic with what they've done here. I'll hold this up here first. Let's see. Up here. Now, if you look down there, you may be able to read. Look at that. You see that? D.W. Griffith's Office of the Storm. Isn't the that strength. something? Look how old that is. I, we've got a date on this. Uh, hang on, just a 1922 second. 1922 or 3. I'll tell you in a minute. Wait a minute. October. You're right. 1922. <laughs> Does it fit? Look at that. Isn't that something? Yeah. That's lit. And look at this here. It says, who doesn't know this famous pair? It says, no one. They're on the topmost rung of screen success. One in comedy, the other is drama. And the one on the top is Happy Doug Fairbanks. Yeah? And look at this one down here. Graceful Lillian Gish. An innocent Magdalena. You know what it says here about this story? It says, brought up by her father in bitter distrust of the world, married to a young gambler in opposition to her father's will, 
only to find that the shadow of prison hangs over a husband's life. You were dramatic in those days. What was that? Okay. That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> that goes a long way back, too. That's 1916. That one. Well, then, no wonder I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned that. Uh, there's one gentleman in there that's mentioned. The other one, uh, I'll, we'll talk about him in a moment, Douglas Fairbanks Sr. But let's talk about uh, a name that probably young people have heard many times and uh, thousands of people have heard. Not too many people know about it. Rudolf Valentino. Well, my sister, my blessed sister Dorothy, found him, discovered him dancing in a, uh, at a time when everyone, if you went to tea, two people got up and danced. If you went to dinner, two people got up and danced, mm. or after the theater, and he was dancing and looked like a Spaniard. And she knew Mr. Griffith was doing a film called Scarlet Days and needed a Spanish leading man. Mm. She told him, uh, told Mr. Griffith about him and asked if she could have him out to the studio. And he saw him and he said, oh no, he's too far looking. The <laughs> girls wouldn't like him. Uh -huh. It's but, one of his few mistakes. Yeah. And she said, well, could I use him? So he made his debut in uh, films in one of her comedies that Paramount was releasing at the time mm. but he was such a fastidious man he took too long to get dressed and they couldn't use him again because <laughs> they couldn't wait that long time <laughs> <laughs> time is money in mm. movies and in those days we didn't have that much money of course now we'll move on to Doug Fairbank senior in just a second but uh, 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 Mary Pickford a, a famous silent film star was, a, was a, a childhood friend of yours. In fact, that's how you got into Hollywood in the first place, I understand. Well, she'd been in theater. She was Trontonian from Canada. And her mother and my mother were friends. Mm. And we used, they used to take an apartment together in summertime while we were looking for our winter's jobs mm. to save money. And Mary would take care of us and take us to the theater and look after her, her brother, her sister, and Dorothy and me. And she was always a little mother, and we did just as she said. And we'd go to see plays and sit in the gallery, and she'd say, now you listen. This is the way you should speak English, and this is how you learn to act. Watch these good actors. Mm. And maybe. Mm. So you, you went to the gates of the studio in, uh, in uh, California, or where was it? New, New York. York. New York, yes, to find her. We've lived in New York since we were five years. Mm. Who were you looking for when you went there? Mary, uh, Gladys Smith. Ah, is he, that's what I was trying she, to get. That, that was her real name. Yeah. And I'd seen them in a film, Dorothy and I, and Mother said, oh, what misfortune has befallen the Smiths? They have to go to the movies to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, how we... Tell him, uh, would you tell everybody the famous uh, Douglas Fairbanks line when he was annoyed and thought he was going to leave movies? Douglas Fairbanks Sr. Oh. They give many reasons why Douglas left. But around 1927, 28, he said, you know, Lillian, it's time for us to leave this business. And I said, why, Doug? Uh, because he was always so optimistic, you know. He had n nothing negative in him. And he said, do you know who the most popular star in the world is today? And I said, no, I don't. He said, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> how, we, how can we compete with that? That's right. How could you compete with the well, rest? Well, that's why I say D.W. Griffith is the father of film. And the only man that's added a dimension since then is Walt Disney. Mm, I would have to agree with you, too. Tell, am I allowed to ask how old you are without you getting insulted? I like my date was printed in the Seattle, Washington newspaper. I made my debut in 1842. Now, don't you think I look pretty good? <laughs> <laughs> All of the rest of these was things that were taken care of by people and staff and stuff, but I made somebody get out. These are for me personally, oh, for you, because you're a beauty. Mr. I love you, Lane. you're terrific. Yes, you. oh, really in this, We'll be back soon. Soon we'll be back with Howard Keel. we got a few other surprises for you. We'll be back. Really in this.
How are you? Isn't I'm she a fine. fantastic woman? Oh, I just, I had never met her before, and I fell in love with her. I want to take her on the road with me and sing duets. Yes. You know? <laughs> Those sparkling blue eyes are something. Aren't She's they? fantastic. She I really mean, is. Yes. I don't want to, I don't want to give away. If she would have said herself how old she was, but isn't she amazingly alert and active? Very. A woman her age. She is very good. sharp. Mm. She's about twenty-four. Yeah. She's <laughs> about 24. Somewhere sure. around there, in sure. the neighborhood, anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What about you? Did you start out to go into films uh, in your career? Was no, it? no, no. I, you know, being an old broken down bass, I never thought of ever doing anything like that. I, I, I wanted to be a concert singer. You know, to legitimate. You mean? No? Yes, yeah. yes. All my studies were in the the classical field, you say, mm. and so when it comes to this sort of thing, uh, it was a big surprise, actually. Huh? So. Uh, what made you decide to be? I mean, how did you come about to want to be a singer in the first place? Was that a childhood desire or accident? I got loaded one time with some friends. And I used to, <laughs> yes, true. I used, I used to imitate uh, opera stars and they come. So one night, uh, <laughs> I was at this house where they were living, and there's a lovely lady by the name of Mom Ryder, mm. and she played piano by ear. And we had lifted a few, and, and he said, "Come on, let's sing." So I got up and I sang. Mm -hmm. I did "In the Still of the Night" was the big hit in those days. And she said, "Young man, you have got a very fine voice. You ought to study." And I said, "Well, point me," because I didn't know where to go. Mm. I took my first lesson in. Uh, a little conservatory in East Los Angeles, and I paid 25 cents for it. And, 25 uh, cents for your first that's lesson? That's about all it was worth, actually, you know? My point. <laughs> <laughs> At least it got me started. Hmm. Yeah. That's My first I lesson cost me two bucks, but I won't tell you where that was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know where it was. <laughs> you know, I used to go in and say, is Howard still here? Yes, no, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Grayson, she was on the show here last year, and she talked with us. Yeah. Uh, she told some interesting stories mm -hmm. about uh, you and she. Now, uh, just before we get on to that, MGM musicals, of course, you would have had to been part of uh, what they had in those days, which they don't have anymore, contract players right. at MGM. Right. right. Yeah. How many were in that? Uh, oh, my gosh. Well, there's a picture taken at one time. There were 50 mm. stars under contract to MGM, and that, that big picture that they had. And I, I feel like a bloody idiot because I had just come to MGM and had never done a picture, and I was sitting there with Gable and and uh, Tracy and. Oh, but uh, you Captain must have been thrilled out of your mind to be sitting. I mean, to sit there, you know. I, oh, yeah. But I, I was I was speechless. I didn't say a, a damn word. I just just sat there and looked at them, you know, because it, they were all mm. big, big stars. When when Catherine was here, we were talking about the early Catherine Hepburn, yeah. uh, uh, Catherine Grayson, excuse me, Catherine Sorry. Grayson early, and you said that she had an 18-inch waist. Right. Oh, she was, an, she was the most beautiful girl you ever laid your eyes on. I tell you, you had to fall in love with Katie because she was very sweet as well. If she liked you, mm. and if she didn't, good luck. Yes. <laughs> there was no gray area with Katie, believe me. But she was gorgeous. And uh, in Kiss Me, Kate, it got a little serious. Now, she told us a story here. There's a scene in Kiss Me, Kate where you two do a lot of slapping. Well, she did the slapping, yes. That's yes, right. right. Yes. And she said that you were supposed to spank her. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. She said that she slipped something down inside her dress so you'd hurt your hand. Oh, in some of her, you know, uh, cute little things in some of the rehearsals, she decided she was going to pull something like that, you know. Right. Yeah. Put a board in her fanny, you see, on a paddle. Yeah. Because, but before that, uh, she has to slap me around pretty good. Mm. And she was faking. I said, Katie, you can't fake it. You've got to hit me, you know, because you can't do that. She said, look, Howard, I hit very hard. I said, oh, come on, how hard can you hit, you know? I said, you've got to. And finally, she got a little upset. And so finally, the next scene, she went, I'm going to tell you, she knocked me cross-eyed. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> so hard. I tell you. We're going to do a number four now. That's what I understand. OK. All right. You'll go over there. It's good to see you again. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. your beautiful hive from the musical Seven Brides the Seven Brothers. Another hand, Mr. Howard Keel. Here you are. Bless your beautiful heart, wherever you may be. We ain't met yet, but I'm willing to bet you're the gal for me. Bless your beautiful heart, you're just as good as lost. I oh, don't know your name, but I'm mistaken my claim, lest your eyes is crossed. Oh, I'd swap my gun and I'd swap my meal, though whoever took it would be one big fool. And pay your way through cooking school, if in you would say I do. 
skillful pad, prepare to bend your knee. Hey, take that bow, cause I'm a telling you now, you're the girl for me. Pretty and slim, not too slim. Simple and sweet, not too sweet. Simple and sweet, oh. 